to food-based cultural traditions um, and religious rituals. Uh, it has been an awesome opportunity for Interfaith to uh, expand its organizational reach uh, all through partnerships with Kensington-based organizations. So before we begin, I would love to say thank you so much to our partners, uh, you know, Kate Tuesday, Joel and Sarah from the Free Library, uh, Zari and, and the staff at Kensington Voice, Ella from uh, Kensington Community Food Co-op, Jackie from New Kensington Community Development Corporation, uh, and Joel from Philadelphia Scenic Works, as well as the people at Community Center at Visitation, Norris Square Neighborhood Project, Philly Unknown, and a handful of other businesses in the Kensington area. So thank you so much for your support and work in helping all the events like tonight and those seen in the slideshow um, run so smoothly. So thank you so much again. And with that, I think I'm gonna hand it off to uh, Chelsea who will lead us into the first event of the night, which is the uh, Food and Faith panel. Thanks, Matt, and thank you for all your work throughout the project. So um, as Matt mentioned, my name is Chelsea Jackson. I'm the Community Partnerships Director at Interfaith Philadelphia, and I direct the Crafting Community Project, which is a three neighborhood, three year uh, initiative around art and education within three Philadelphia neighborhoods. It's community rooted, it's collaborative, and it's community driven. And that is really what we're celebrating tonight, this community process and this community project, as Matt pointed out, around the intersections of food, faith, and culture. And so a little bit just about Interfaith Philadelphia, I saw that Zari put our link in the chat. But Interfaith Philadelphia, if you're unfamiliar, is a nonprofit that serves the greater Philadelphia region. And we are 18 years old as of this month. And we do a lot of different programs, the Crafting Community Project being one of them. But we have workshops um, and trainings for facilitators, for teachers, for workplaces. We have a women's and, and femmes cohort. We have uh, programs for youth and middle schoolers and high schoolers and college students. So really there's something for everyone at Interfaith Philadelphia. And if you'd like to learn more, you can check out our website or you can reach out to me. Um, and I would love to find ways to partner together and connect even more. So with that being said, I just want to offer a few reminders for tonight. For those who might um, need or want the closed captions, you can find those at the bottom of your screen um, on the Zoom panel. And also um, you might have heard that this event is being recorded. The large group portion will be recorded, but the small group breakout rooms will not be. So if you would like to uh, turn off your video and not be seen on the recording, that is more than fine. And then the small groups again won't be recorded. Also feel free to use the chat, um, check in with the chat. Zari is going to be posting throughout the night uh, really beneficial resources and links. But we can also use the chat to check in with one another and ask questions and be in conversation and share things that we're excited about and what we're hearing tonight. Also if you need any help um, with troubleshooting, Sarah is and another fellow Interfaith Philadelphia staff member, and she'll be helping with tech tonight. So feel free to send a message to Sarah directly if you have trouble and are troubleshooting. Um, yeah, and then just as a courtesy, we can remember that if there's a lot of background noise or a lot of stuff um, that are going on around you, then please be sure to mute yourself so as not to disturb the rest of the, the group. All right, and with that, let me just run over the evening uh, which you can find in your program. So on page two of the program, you can find um, kind of the next steps for the evening. We'll have our food and faith panel with our wonderful panelists. We'll then have one breakout room activity and you'll have three breakout rooms to choose from. And then we'll have a second breakout room activity time. Now you'll see that two out of the three breakout rooms are 50 minutes in length, but they'll have kind of a natural pausing point in the middle. So you can hop in on the second half if you want, or you can leave right after the first half and go to another breakout room if you like. So those are the, the breakout rooms. There, there are descriptions on the third page of your program and were also sent in the email that I sent earlier today. And then after those breakout room activities, we'll have just a brief moment of closing and gratitude. So we really hope that you'll stay for that um, as we come together and really close out the evening as a group. 
So with that being said, let's go ahead and get our panel kicked off. We have three wonderful panelists joining us today. And I'm going to go ahead and introduce them briefly, and then they will um, share a little bit more about themselves. So the first panelist that we have is um, Anas Dabur. And Anas is representing the Alamana Grocery, which is associated with and located at Al-Aqsa um, Islamic Society, right there on Germantown Ave. And so um, Anas has been affiliated with this, the grocery store for um, 25 years when his uncle founded the store and then his parents and him now own it um, since his uncle moved out of the country. They serve not only um, Alaksa worshipers and community members, but also uh, the students that go to the Alaksa school on the campus, as well as community members in general and, and the families within the community. And I can attest that their falafel sandwiches are delicious. They are amazing. So um, be sure to, to check them out. I'll put a link as well in the chat because we featured Anas and the store on our Wonderings blog, blog which was uh, affiliated with this project. And so I'll put that link so you can read more about the store and be sure to visit. Um, it's, you know, Anas made it very clear that the store and the community center at Aloxa is open to, to everyone and that it brings so much joy to have the community present um, at the store and on the campus. So um, the next person that I'd like to introduce is Mangalarti, who is joining us from Gita Nagar Eco Farm and Sanctuary. And so the farm was associated with um, Mantra Lounge, who some of you may know. And um, recently Mantra Lounge has shut down, but um, Mangalarti was great, great enough to come here and speak to us not only about kind of what um, motivated some of the work, you know, the faith-based work that Mantra Lounge was doing when they were here, but also talk a lot about the eco-sanctuary. Um, the sanctuary itself is the first USDA certified slaughter-free farm whose practices exceed the average lifespan of cows, which is 18 years plus. I did not know that. That's amazing. And Mangalarti herself is a priest, a mentor, a teacher, and lead students and adults in workshops on the Vedas. Thank you, Mangalarti, for being here. Um, Thank you. Yeah, the, the third and final panelist for tonight is Kaz Todd Pearson from The Simple Way. So The Simple Way is an organization in Kensington that's focused on building neighborhood, uh, a neighborhood where everyone belongs and where everyone thrives. And this can look like a variety of things for The Simple Way. It can look like celebrating together, gardening together, offering resources and connecting folks to resources. And it can look like striving for systemic change with one another. Kaz is a New Zealander uh, who recently got back from travels. We're grateful that she's joined us tonight. Yeah. And um, has lived in Kensington for 13 years and been a director of The Simple Way for seven. So that was a lot of me talking. Now I want to hear what y'all have to say. Um, so let's just go ahead and jump right into this panel. And I will note that the panel itself, this large group portion is going to be pretty quick, but there is going to be a second Q&A where you can ask your questions directly to Anas and Kaz. Unfortunately, Mangalarti has to leave, yep. but um, Anas and Kaz will be around in a yep. breakout room to answer questions. Um, so there is more time with them, I promise. So with that, let's just go ahead and get started. Um, Anas, with you first. Let's hear, um, if you don't mind, just sharing a little bit about the store and kind of how um, food and, and faith kind of connect for, for you and those at Aloxa and the store. Awesome. Well, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it is a pleasure and honor to be here, and I'm very excited. Um, as Chelsea brought up, uh, she came in about two, three months ago to do her little article with the Crafting Community. And um, it was just a great conversation, you know, trying to find out about community, religious aspects within the food. So, you know, she did bring up that um, our family has been in charge of 
Telemana grocery store for over 25 years, which is uh, quite a long time to have a successful business for that long, you know, and we want to contribute all of that to, you know, our customers and our community, really, because um, Al-Aqsa Islamic Society has been around roughly 30 years, so um, pretty much grew up together, and having them working with um, Interfaith um, around the area, you know, North Kensington Community Center, uh, this grows, cooks, and serves a uh, new venture, you know, so just to have our hands in, like, a little bit of everything, it's it's really been a pleasure, and like we said, for community, um, nothing beats having that strong community, knowing that I can go up the block, go to the simple grocery store just to, for a hi or hello, or as Chelsea brought up, a falafel sandwich or something nice like that. So thank you, and we'll see you with the rest. Thank you. Um, Mangalarti, would you share with us a little bit about your community and organization and how um, the faith and, and religious practices might be um, important uh, as far as it relates to food and community. Yeah, um, thank you so much for having me here. And I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be here for the panel part, but please feel free to share my email with the participants. If they wanna email me and reach out to me, I'll be happy to answer things <laughs> offline. Um, we're an intentional living community in Port Royal, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's just about two and a half hours from Kensington. And we had a project in, in the Kensington area for a while and worked a lot with the community there, feeding people uh, in need, especially during the pandemic, free meals, hundreds of meals going out um, every week. And um, we're an intentional living community and we're an echo farm and sanctuary. Uh, somebody's asking where in Pennsylvania, it's in Port Royal, Pennsylvania, we host groups. So if you all wanna just come someday for a retreat or something, we, you host, you can, we host groups and, um, you know, there's cow cuddling, there's organic farming. Actually, our whole existence is about food and uh, animal rights and protection and things like that. So we're the first USDA recognized slaughter-free dairy in all of North America. Um, and uh, we also um, have a CSA program. So it's organic produce that we produce and we, you know, share it with uh, people in the community. And there's plant-based meals that are catered every day. Uh, for people who are interested in really healthy farm grown food. <laughs> and actually food is a very integral part of our practice. We're often known as a kitchen religion, the Krishna consciousness faith uh, or the Bhakti yoga faith so often known as a kitchen religion. So um, I think there's a second question or a second round where you're gonna ask about the food connection with religion. So I'll save it for that. But yeah, I'd love to invite everybody to come visit us. It's a really amazing space during the pandemic a lot of students from top universities around the world just came and um, spent their entire uh, semester at the farm being safe from the pandemic and just studying by themselves it's a very sweet place 350 acres of land so please come and visit thank you yeah i i remember at mantra lounge just always um sharing meals together yeah. after meditation yeah. or after worship and um, right it was a vegan it, meals. I want to add that vegan yeah. meals and also just with such intention that the real practice behind the cooking being yeah. very intentional, filled with with love and, and with peace. And, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to hear more. And we get more pleasure from feeding you than you might get from me. It's just so <laughs> that. that says so much. That says so much about the community and and the practices of the community. So um, I will miss Mantra Lounge, they were a wonderful, wonderful host, but it's also great to know that you're still not too far away and that, uh, you mean, I mean, cow cuddling, like I'm there for that, so. We have goats and peacocks and too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. No problem. Kaz, uh, can you share a little bit about the simple way and, and kind of it's um, the faith or spiritual practices that are rooted within it and some of the food work that you do? Sure. Um, our work in Kensington started about 24 years ago um, when six college friends who were inspired by relationships that they had built with um, families who were um, found themselves to be living in an abandoned church and um, advocated for housing for them 
um, they were really motivated to move into the neighborhood, to be in proximity um, to the folks that they were in a relationship with. And they were really inspired by um, the early Christian church and the passage in um, Acts 2 from the Christian Bible that says that um, the faithful all lived together, owned everything in common, sold their goods and possessions and set, shared the proceeds among themselves with each other. Um, and that they uh, shared as a body, that they broke bread together and shared food generously. So that was like the beginning of who we are um, today. Uh, we've grown to, into, we've evolved into a, um, uh, from sort of a, a, an intentional community, uh, friends living together to an organization where um, we've grown into um, a large food choice pantry right here on the corner of Potter Street, um, the heart of Kensington. And uh, we, we currently serve about 150 people um, every week who are coming to shop for food. Um, and last year alone, we gave over 150,000 pounds of food from the our, our house on the corner here. Um, we, we have two... Um, vegetable gardens and a park space that we've developed and um, to contribute to the beautiful um, to the beautification of um, Kensington and to to give us the capability to use our own produce and to share that in our food distribution um, because that's uh, really important to us to we want to provide food, but we want to provide food that um, allows people to be creative with their cooking and um, move towards health as well. Um, food sharing has always been a part of what we've done. With a, it started with six people inviting people to um, eat a meal around their table and move to sort of giving soup from our back door um, to lines and lights of people to developing you know, a really high functioning food choice pantry. Um, and what we have found is it's been really meaningful in the um, development of relationships with our neighbors and with the community. And, you know, we haven't seen necessarily a lot of change around us in the neighborhood, but we've, we've got huge relational capital and um, that feels really evident when you go away for six months and come back and everyone around you is supporting you and helping you in your transition. Well, that's just what's happened to me recently. So, um, and that's a, it's a huge part of our faith is um, just sharing our lives with others and community and um, so that we can all flourish and thrive together. Thank you. That's amazing. I love that um, that it's called a food choice pantry. I love the idea of the agency and the choice of what folks get, what they choose, what they could best use um, and have admired the work of The Simple Way for quite a while. So thank you for all that you're doing within the community. So let's go ahead and move on to our second question. Um, and I know, Mangalarti, you have to leave a little bit early. So let's go ahead and start with you. Um, Thank you. Yeah. In what, in what ways is food connected to the spiritual practices or religious beliefs held by, um, by the farm? And for those who might not be familiar with the um, faith or, or religious practice that you, you practice or adhere to, um, you know, how, how might they understand both that faith practice and its connection yeah to yes thank you so much um like i mentioned in my previous response we're often called the kitchen religion uh, because you are what you eat and uh, we do so much in this world but there's a little bit we put, very little we put inside <laughs> but i want to bring out two elements today that we are not just vegetarians we like to call ourselves prashadatarians and which is where the spiritual angle comes up. So there's food and then there's prashad. They're two different things. And I want to just make the difference. Prashad is a Sanskrit term from ancient uh, yoga text, And it means the mercy of God, the mercy of Supreme. So when we cook food, we're not cooking it as in like just chewing it, munching it, 
licking it or like, you know, trying it out as we're doing it. It's very pure, prayerful activity. We're praying throughout the cooking process. We don't taste or smell anything while we're cooking it. And uh, we just literally prepare it as an offering of love for the Supreme. And every time we cook a meal, like could be breakfast, could be a cup of um, juice or something. Whenever we cook something, um, we're cooking it as an offering of love. And then after we're done cooking, we off, we we put it in a separate plate that we all, all, that we keep specially for the Supreme uh, Krishna, as we understand, and um, and we put it in a plate and we offer it with ancient mantras from the yoga texts, and we act, which is really appealing. That please accept it um, and imbibe it with love and service for you. So it's just literally asking that please, um, you know, this is for you. It's not for my enjoyment, it's for you. And then after that, after giving it 10, 15 minutes, we bring it back and we mix it with all the meal. So the whole meal is kind of like blessed and sanctified food. So uh, that's why it's called prashad and literally, which means prashad, mercy of Lord. So it's not that we're just vegetarians because it's often explained in scriptures that there's many birds and animals like maybe pigeons or elephants or they're vegetarians. So what's so different about us? We eat what the Supreme says. We're not eating, we just offering and so in the bhagavad gita which is the ancient yoga set, text that said patram kushpam falam toyam yome bhakta prayachati leaves flowers fruits juices milk things like that whatever you offer me with love bhakti which is a, that is what i accept see there's an actual list of things that can be offered so we offer food that can be offered and uh, we share it with everyone so i just want to bring that one small angle out that it's not just about Oftentimes people t- say we are vegetarian or vegan, but there's karma and killing plants too. And it's true. So we don't, we don't like eat for the gratification of our tongues. <laughs> it's more done, at least that's at the best we can. It's done to try and offer to the Supreme. So I don't know if that in a nutshell gives you the spiritual angle of it, but I wanted to bring that out, that it's spiritual food. So whenever you come and you have a meal with us, it's made with a lot of prayer and in contemporary language it's called intentional food you can see there's om water and different things where people are starting to recognize the power of that and i'm sure in, in many faith traditions this exists um so i yeah, i've heard of it so um, growing up in india i've seen a lot of different um faith traditions have similar practices but i wanted to share that that's that's beautiful thank you and that adds such like you said, it's not just taking at face value of a label. Yeah. Oh, you're vegan or vegetarian. It's giving yeah. it to depth. Um, yeah. So thank you for that insight. And and we welcome anybody who wants to have cooking classes or wants to come visit. I'm so sorry. I have to leave early because I have to be on the altar doing a little cer- ceremony. That's why I have to go. But please feel free to contact. And it was so nice to hear from Anas and Kaz too. And please stay in touch. I've left my email there. Thank you. Please forgive me for leaving early. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye. And now, so let's. Um, I know that you've actually, in in our conversations together, have expressed kind of some similar um, undertones of of praying over certain ingredients or certain specifically meats and what it means to be halal and um, the care and consideration that goes into some of the food practices within the Islamic faith. So would you mind sharing a little bit, and and if that's not on your agenda to share, that's totally fine too, but would you mind sharing um, just a little bit about the ways that food is connected to the spiritual and religious practices of your faith tradition? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, You know, uh, what Mangal Arti was saying about how when you start off a meal or how you end the meal, you know, there are so many similarities within all the religions of how to like, begin your meal or how to end your meal or how to prepare your meal so one of the big things especially for a practicing muslim is to try to look for like uh halal foods or foods that are as she said um you can eat and um from you know growing up here american um having the understanding from the religion like you said earlier i uh, went to an all islamic school which taught you islamic studies and just having all these different ideas and aspects coming in um when someone brings up halal you know um all kind of vegetables are halal all kind of fruits and uh plants anything from the earth would be considered to be halal you know then also that is god's given uh gift to us you know something that's on this earth 
and then the halal is more specifically towards um, the humane slaughtering of the animal. So um, there was that little um, difference between uh, being the vegan or vegetarian versus you know having that food because absolutely there are Muslims that are strictly plant-based eaters or want to avoid eating those meats but having that um, halal aspect of it knowing that you're um, the meal that you're about to eat the animal that you are eating is um, was raised humanely fed properly given the land and space to run around um, uh, not kept in a pen with 50 other chickens and you know all that all that um, crazy like uh, manufacturing companies giving out these foods and you're like oh my god the way they treat these animals I mean I wouldn't want a, a, a goat or a chicken that's been scared uh, lifeless pretty much to be on my plate who knows the taste might be the, the same but just knowing that the quality of the animal was humanely slaughtered humanely taken care of just gives us that like recognition to keep reminding you like the religious aspect of it and um you are what you eat as um man man rt brought up and um just the healthier you eat the more you take care of what you're taking in uh you'll get more out of it for your life and um i just will also want to bring up another really big aspect of muslims and the way we eat and uh bringing that in with religion is our fasting so every year we have about 30 days where we fast uh, from sunset, um, from sunrise to sunset. My apologies. It's, the sun's definitely set it now. So, <laughs> so um, we do that for 30 days of practice. You know, um, a lot of people, we tell them, oh, no food, no water. We're just sunrise to sunset and we're good to go, you know, and a lot of people be like, wow, no water, no, nothing, nothing at all. And it's like, yeah, nothing really. <laughs> and j just that practice, um, the reason it's in the religion is to like have that feeling of um, so that you don't get gluttonous, I guess. You can see how there are some people that don't have food or are don't have access to clean water or don't have access to having a meal a day or go for two three days without having a meal so it just kind of puts it in perspective like oh wow for this month it's just one little month you know sunrise to sunset i could push it through and i could definitely say that because i've been doing it my entire life it is a little there is some difficulty to it but that difficulty is what makes you realize like wow i'm so blessed to have this meal at the end of my day i'm so blessed to be able to go have a cup of water after this and just you know there's Religion is definitely, uh, uh, food and religion are very focal within the practice. So um, I'll pass it off to you guys for now. And we could definitely keep going on about this for later, for sure. Thank you. Oh, we're, we're counting on it in the panel, <laughs> um, the Q&A. Um, thank you. And and one thing that just stood out um, in our in our conversation when we were um, doing the, the blog interview was um, you sharing that one of the first things that your community at Alaksa and specifically the store um, does to break the month of Ramadan for Eid is to cook a meal for the community as a whole and to break fast um, and make sure that like those who are coming actually break fast with you and have food. And so, and, and you um, have, you have those, um, evening meals where you're cooking all day for folks to celebrate um at if, the end if i could day. just clarify one thing chelsea yeah, please. It's, um every day of the month so yeah. every day of the month at um sunset so we're actually in the kitchen um preparing these food so every day right before sunset which we call maghrib time um we have uh 150 to two three 200 300 people that are coming to prayer to break their fast. And like I was telling you with our interview is sometimes it's just neighbors. Maybe it's a customer that happened to come in earlier that day. It's like, oh, hey, by the way, we're giving out some platters later on. So yeah. for the 30 days, yes, we are serving that food. And on the last day, which is the Eid day, um, same thing. We have the food, we're serving people. Um, 
the Al-Aqsa Islamic Society brings out balloons for the kids to celebrate. So it's really like um, a celebratory day to finally be as gluttonous as you want, enjoy, have a good time, sweets, popcorn, cotton candy. So it's, mm. you know, it being avoiding food for 30 days, you come back to it like, oh my goodness, I've missed out on so much, but <laughs> I don't want to take too much time, but <laughs> of course. No, that's just a beautiful, I think Pamela said it in the chat, like what a beautiful act of service to the community. And I just remember very clearly you saying like every day we're cooking all day, smelling these like great smells on an empty stomach so that when folks come at night and break fast, like there's food for them. So um, that takes some discipline. I, I applaud that um, and, and just love hearing about that really beautiful practice. So thank you for sharing. Kaz, would you um, please share a bit about um, the faith tradition that the Simple Way maybe grew out of or, or you know, um, is rooted in and also how you see the intersections with food and spiritual practice and, and faith in your community? Yeah, I think um, my experience uh, in um, our Christian tradition and um, our Christian life is that food and drink play significant roles um, on with specific like communion or feast days or fasting. Um, and I think you'll find uh, across the diversity of Christianity that um, if everyone is sort of practicing those differently. Um, for us at the simple way, where sort of our faith is grounded in um, a commitment to love God, love people, and follow Jesus. Um, the sharing food um, in the ways that we have over the years is just simply an act of love um, and a practice of love. Um, and I think for ourselves and for other people, um, and I think one of our core values here at The Simple Way is radical hospitality. And while I think hospitality encompasses more than just sharing food, um, for us, the fact that we have access to food, the ability to store, the ability to refrigerate the food, the ability to grow the food um, is something that we want to share and feels um, so important to do when um, we're in relationship with other people. And um, for us at The Simple Way, that's the priority is like our relationships with people and um, like giving love to the world um, and being open to receive that love back. And I think food brings people together um in a way that um not many other elements do um and you know f it's been our experience over the years that like whether we're sitting around a table um having a meal and connecting with people or whether we're seeing the same individual or the same family come to our pantry every week we we're growing relationship and building community um, and, and the other ways to um, share life and to flourish and to thrive sort of grow out of that space. Um, because being able to share food on a regular basis offers, um, you know, like I said, the, the chance to build community. Um, and ultimately, like I said before, the hope that we can all feel a little bit more sure and secure um, and in a really uncertain world. And, um, you know, for me, um, as I lead the work and for me, as I practice my faith within the work that we do, um, it is rooted in this place of like love for um, my neighbor and for myself, um, because we get, I, I receive so much back as I'm sharing, um, as I'm gardening, as I'm like cleaning up after a meal, um, so. Thank you. That's really beautiful. I love that idea of offering love, especially through food and meal sharing and the, the small things that we might not even 
know that we have, like you mentioned, like the capability of storing food, like that seems almost so commonplace to so many of us. And so the idea of um, having or, or needing something like that and, and being a um, space to, to offer that is, is beautiful. And that idea of giving love um, through food and sharing meals and resources, but also I love that you also mentioned receiving love, being open to it being this mutual um, mutuality, this this um, mutual exchange and this real relationship. Um, so I think that's just a really beautiful um, practice and and posture to, that you and the simple way take in your work. So thank you both. Um, we are over time, which is not surprising, um, but totally worth it. This has been a really beautiful um, panel. And as we transition into breakout rooms, um, I will just give like one prompt question to start you all off maybe in your breakout room um, because it was a question we didn't get to, to the, in the large group is that question of what is the most surprising thing um, that's happened to you recently in your work in Kensington um, or something about working within the Kensington community that has surprised you. Um, and so that will be the first question that kicks off your Q&A panel. And so with that, everyone, um, we're gonna shift into our breakout rooms. But before we do that, let's just use our little like reaction emojis if you know how to access them. If you don't just like give a, an actual clap, but let's just thank Kaz and Anas for their, their time um, and for the time that they're gonna continue to offer uh, in the Q&A panel. And Mangal Arti, who was gracious enough to give her contact information. Um, I know she wanted to stay, but she couldn't. So with that, we're gonna open breakout rooms. Again, you can find these in your um, program, also in the, eight, um, in the, uh, the email that I sent earlier. And the breakout room function, you now have the opportunity to choose what breakout room you go into. So when the breakout rooms are open, you'll see a little opportunity to join a breakout room at the bottom of your screen. It's like four little squares. And you click on that, and then you should see the three names of the breakout rooms for the first breakout section. So it should say join breakout room now. And so if you click on that, then you'll see, you should see a list of the food and faith panel Q&A, the art making, and the um, cooking and nutrition demonstration. You go to join by hovering over the, the number on the right, and then a button for join should show up. And you click on that, and then you're in your room. And the folks leading those conversations will then help you get to the next breakout room if you decide to switch. So with that, I see a lot of y'all are already off to the races. So go ahead and jump into your breakout rooms. And um, then we will transition a little after seven, since we're behind, uh, we'll transition to the, the next breakout room activity time. All right, with that, have fun. Welcome back. How was that for everyone? Maybe use an emoji or throw in the chat how that how those breakout rooms went for you. Wonderful. Yay. That's so great to, to see. So um, thank you all for for attending tonight and for um, being open to try this virtual festival type of model. Um, it's we're trying to be innovative all the time with the times that we're in. So thank you for for sticking with us. Um, I just wanted to real quick thank all of our, our partners. You can find all of our partners on um, the, the program, but just to shout out to Community Center of Visitation and the Free Library, the co-op, the Kensington Community Co-op, which we'll hear from Ella in just a second, uh, the Kensington Voice. Um, thank you, Zari, for keeping our chat on top of our chat today. Um, Mural Arts Philadelphia and specifically the Kensington Storefront. Thank you to Pamela who's here, um, NKCDC and specifically the program Nourish. And I know that Jackie led um, what I'm 
hearing in the chat it was an amazing breakout room. So thank you, Jackie, and to Matt for leading that work, um, that breakout room. And then Philadelphia Scenic Works as well. Um, and then huge thank you to our panelists. Uh, Kaz also had to leave, but Anas, thank you so much for joining and for being here and, and sharing um, a little bit about your community. And everyone check out, check out this store if you get the chance. Um, and with that, I will go ahead and turn it over to Ella, who's just going to give us a brief closing um, for the evening, and then we can we can all head out. And Ella, just just to um, let you know a little bit about who Ella is, Ella is the marketing and outreach coordinator at the Kensington Co-op, and has been a really great and ever present partner throughout this project. Um, and the Co-op is doing some really great things in the community. So. If you don't know them, I highly suggest that you check them out. All right, and with that, thank you, Ella. Awesome, thanks, Chelsea. Yeah, hey everyone, uh, just wanted to introduce myself quick. I'm Ella um, at the Kensington Community Co-op uh, here in East Kensington. Thanks so much for a great evening of the Kensington Grows Cooks and Serves Festival. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone for coming, you know, these, dark winter evenings and COVID restrictions can really get me down sometimes. So I'm grateful to know that I can turn to the community for support and just an evening of relaxing and learning some new things and that all y'all are nearby and you guys care about the community as much as I do. So um, just to close out the night, we wanted to take a second and ask you to type one word into the chat to describe how you're feeling tonight after this little event. So we'll give you a couple seconds to do that. And um, just wanted to mention that Interfaith Philadelphia is always hosting programs, workshops, and events. So definitely check out the chat um, for links and other upcoming program opportunities. And of course, you're welcome to reach out to Chelsea at Interfaith directly if you have any questions. And everyone should have received a survey in their inbox. So please fill that out. It should only take about three to five minutes and it'll really help us learn just what we can improve on. And awesome, I'm seeing some fun words, inspired, excited, hungry, grateful. I'm definitely feeling some gratitude, inspired. Awesome, great. Well, I hope everyone had so much fun. I hope you learned a few things. Um, huge thanks to everyone, Kensington Voice, Mural Arts, Philadelphia Scenic Works, um, NKCDC, Free Library, and of course, Interfaith. So um, yeah, I hope everyone had a good, great night and I look forward to seeing you all around the neighborhood.